Michael Saman. I'm from Cal State Long Beach, and my advisor is Dr. Amar, whose timing is very good. And I'm going to talk about, <laughs> we'll talk about submodular growth and nucleation. So, first, I'm going to introduce it. Um, why, why are we interested in modeling this? Because what we're doing is modeling and simulating it. Um, I'm going to give you an overview. We're going to kind of very briefly go through the the theory because otherwise it will take way too long. A little bit about Kinetic Monte Carlo, which is the simulation tool we use and the project that I'm starting. So uh, the key here is that we want to understand how how things grow. So we saw a few talks already on, on uh, working with thin films. So we are interested in before one full layer has built up of a material, um, how do these things kind of hop around and stick together and form islands? We want to understand this quantitatively. Um, just some motivation, it's literally everywhere, right? And film technology is everywhere. So understanding how this process happens is very important, especially as we get to smaller and smaller devices. So, uh, this is kind of the model of what's happening, right? So you have something that's, you have things being deposited with some deposition rate we call F. It's actually a deposition rate per site, right? So it's a deposition flux. And you have things diffusing, you have things bouncing around with some diffusion rate D. And, right. And one of the key parameters is I, which is called the critical island size. Now this defines the, the, smallest number of elements, whether they're atoms or molecules or whatever, that form a stable island that no longer moves around and bounces around, minus one. So I equals one means that a dimer is stable, that two things sticking together are stable, so on and so forth. Another key parameter is the diffusion rate over the deposition rate. So this is called R, D over F. So if things have much more of a tendency to diffuse, then you're gonna get things moving around very often before you deposit the next thing, and, and so on. And this actually can vary several orders of magnitudes in a lot of physical systems, something from like 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 19, something like that. So this is an analytical model. These are called the rate equations. This is a bit of classical nucleation theory that I'm not going to spend too much time on. But, um, but this is kind of the big general model. And these equations actually kind of make sense. N1 is the average monomer density, average island density. Theta is the coverage. So equivalently, you could write these as time evolution equations instead of coverage. But when you simulate, it makes more sense to scale with system size to say, I'm going to keep simulating until this much of it is covered, rather than I'm going to keep simulating for X amount of time. Okay, so these are just parameters here. And the deal is trying to solve these for variables that we're interested in and see what kinds of different behaviors we can get with different scenarios. Now the way that we check these models is by simulating with kinetic Monte Carlo. And the general idea is you decide, you have a program run through and decide statistically whether you're going to deposit something or whether you're going to move something based on these rates, based on these uh, the rate of deposition and the rate of diffusion. So you pick a random number, you add them together, you pick a random number, and if the number is less than deposition rate, right, so it goes from zero to this total, then you deposit. So if D over F, if R gets much, much bigger, that means you're much more likely to diffuse, right? So your R total is much bigger where your R deposition stays the same. So this is actually really, really accurate for modeling these things, so much so that we use it to check the results of the analytical theories. And some, probably the key result um, is that the peak island density, so eventually these things saturate, scales like R to the Xi. Okay? Now this Xi has a lot of different approximate forms depending on what dimension you're in, depending on what your I is, um, and actually, this is the thing that with certain, with certain simulations or experiments, none of the analytical models based on the rate equations actually fit the data. That's interesting. Now, what I'm looking at, or what I'm going to start looking at, is uh, systems where we have subdiffusion. So I'm running out of time, but basically, this defines what kind of diffusion you have. So something subdiffusive 
uh, bounces around, but doesn't bounce around at a constant rate. It has a waiting time. And actually, the waiting times change. There's a distribution of waiting times. Um, this actually happens in Xerox machines. This is how this whole thing started. And what I'm looking at is, well, I'm going to simulate it. So the project is to simulate it and look at things like verify the behavior of R squared and see what happens <coughs> with that XI. So that's all. Any questions for Michael? Uh, did you define subdiffusion again? I missed what that Yes, sorry, I was running out of time. So what kind of diffusion goes on is, um, is characterized by the behavior of the average mean squared distance. So if you imagine in 1D, if, um, just the R average is going to be zero, right? If you do a random walk, it's going to be zero. So you look at R squared, and it turns out to go like T to the, to the exponent beta. And depending on what this beta is, tells you what kind of diffusion you have. Mm -hmm. So normal diffusive stuff that's just a random walk without any funny business going on, you get it to scale with t. The mean square distance scales with t. Um, if it's less than 1, then it's subdiffusive. If it's greater than 1, then it's super diffusive. So super diffusive means that something can uh, go in one direction for longer, let's say. It has less tendency to randomly change directions. So is that beta dependent on the property of the material? Yes, yeah. Yeah, but on the material and also on the substrate. Substrate. Right. All right. Well, let's thank Michael.